the world leader in motorsports coverage presents Speed World. We're just 40 miles east of Birmingham, Alabama, in the sprawling 2,000-acre, 2.66-mile facility they call Talladega Super Speedway. Side of today's ARCA Pole and Pro 500K. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch, and welcome to another Speed World coverage of an exciting event here today, the ARCA 500-kilometer event. The Midwestern Short Track stars take to the high banks here at Talladega at speeds close to 200 miles per hour. Joining me once again, two-time NASCAR champion Ned Jarrett. And Ned, this race always very exciting, but one of the reasons, I think, is because some of these drivers have never been on asphalt before, and what a way to start on a track like Talladega. Well, certainly where they run upwards of speeds of 200 miles an hour, there is a varied amount of experience in the field. In fact, there's about 30 miles an hour that separates the pole winner from the last place car. So when some of those faster cars come up on slower cars, start lapping them, they're going to have to be very careful. We also have a variety of engines in the field. Some of the drivers are using V8 engines with restrictor plates on them, while others are using V6s. So it should make for an interesting race let's take a look at our diehard starting grid for today's arc of it 40 cars will start a pair of chevrolets in row one bill vitterini and ken reagan back to row two dave mater and a chrysler product the car number 99 of donnie moran back in row three jimmy horton remember that five consecutive speedway string of a year ago in wins he won this race here chris gurky will start the outside row three back to row four mike davis and bobby bowsher a young second generation driver he'll be a guy to watch Carl Miscotton Jr. inside row five, and the defending ARCA Permatech Supercar Series champion Bob Freeback. Row six is John Alexander. Inside, back to row seven, Bobby Gerhardt and Bob Keselowski. Back to row eight, another Chrysler product for Roy Payne and Ben Hess, the Daytona winner. Back to row nine, Bobby Woods in the car number 04, and Dale McDowell in the 33. Glenn Brewer, younger brother of Tim Brewer in the car number 10, and Walter Serma in the 68. Back to row 11, three-time ARCA national champion Bob Daughter and Mark Thompson. Bobby Massey, local short track ace, starting his car number 67 inside row 12, and Clay Young from the IMSA ranks in the car number 5. Row 13, former Rookie of the Year Mark Gibson along with Bill Flowers, the veteran Red Farmer who qualified that car number 37 inside row 14, and Bernie Robidart. For row 15, Jerry Hill in the car number 56, the car number 97 is Brad Hallman. Back to row 16, former Rookie of the Year, Graham Taylor, and Keith Edge, his first ever asphalt start. Row 17, Alan Pruitt and Ron Cox, another newcomer to asphalt racing. Row 18, Craig Rubright and the veteran Billy Simmons. And the final row, 19, Billy Thomas and David Boggs. Getting set for green flag racing action, someone who knows a lot about ARCA competition and what it can do for your career, former two-time ARCA champion and our expert analyst today in the pits, Benny Parsons. Benny? Jerry Punch, the greatest thing that ever happened to me and a lot of race car drivers in 1964, the ARCA circuit started going to Daytona and running a 200-mile event at the Daytona International Speedway. That's where I got my experience put on my resume that says I've raced on a 200-mile racetrack. In 1969, they came to Talladega for the first time. I was able to put I've raced in Talladega on my resume. That's one reason when I went to LG DeWitt in 1970 and asked to drive his race car, when he looked at my resume, he said, you've been to Daytona? He said, you can drive my race car. Ernie Irvin, another fella who ran the race in Atlanta, that, he put on his resume the victory there. He was able to get a ride with a four car the next year, the Kodak Film Chevrolet. Arca is a great proving ground for young race car drivers. Indeed it is, Benny Parsons, uh, Rick Wilson, Michael Waltrip, and Davey Allison, and others who have won at this very tough competition. We'll be back with the start of the ARCA Poland Pro 500 after this. Back to Talladega Super Speedway, sign of today's ARCA Poland Pro 500K. Stop number four on the $1.6 million ARCA Tour for 1991. Getting set to go green, Pontiac Grand Prix safety car up at the 33-degree bankings up in turns three and four field of 40 strong. We have two other starters added to the field. J.D. McDuffie in the car number 70 and Joe Boer. That will complete the field making it 40 starters here in today's 500 kilometer event. Bill Venturini was very, very happy with his qualifying run to Jerry. He, he hopes to pace this field all day long, but he knows there's a lot of hungry drivers behind him. 38-year-old driver from Chicago, Illinois, Bill Venturini brings the Nesty Rain-X Chevrolet. From the inside of row one, down for the green flag. 
a delay of four hours and 20 minutes because of rain in the area, but we are finally underway for this 500-kilometer arc of it, and they shuffle off in turn one. Going three and four abreast into turn one, but this is a wide racetrack, and certainly they're not up to their full speed yet, so they can do a little bit of maneuvering around on the high banks at least through one and two. By the time they get to three, though, it's probably in there now a little bit because the speed will be much higher. Paddle he heating up for second spot. Dave Mater on the inside in that car number 11, the Seal Tech Motorsports Buick. He's a substitute driver. He's now falling back out of the draft as they begin to tighten up a little bit on Venturini. Up on the outside is Ken Reagan to the car number 95. Venturini, our pole center to car number 25. And now we'll see if Mater will make it three wide. Well, he picked up the draft and just motored right on down on the inside. And here they come three abreast, Jerry. Mater might have the lead when they come to the start finish line. We told you you wouldn't be disappointed enough. Down on the bottom of the racetrack is Jimmy Horton in the Pontiac, car number 80. That's the white and blue number of car number 80 that now takes the lead. Horton, who won this race a year ago, wasting no time coming from his fifth starting spot to take the lead, but they nearly touch coming out of turn two as Victorini and Reagan now fall back double file in the backstretch. The drafting technique is so important here at Talladega. Those that have that experience will prevail during the afternoon, but everybody trying to jockey for position now. Up front, Horton is your leader. Dave Mater the third, four-time All-American Challenge Series champion. A half a car length back in second spot. Mater sneaks the pick to the inside, but will follow in single file. Two car lengths back is Ken Reagan in the third spot. Then comes Venturini, the pole center. Jerry, there was one driver when the green flag dropped that was on pit road. That was John Alexander in car number 54. He's running about three-fourths of a lap behind the leaders. Dave Mater, who's driving that car number 11, was a last-minute substitute. The 35-year-old Maylene Alabama driver was asked to drive the car in place of Clifford Allison, the youngest son of Bobby Allison, who was scheduled to drive the Clint Folsom on Buick. And now Mater will try to take his shot to the front. And here comes Venturini in the car number 25, down on the inside, trying to follow Mater through there, and he has picked up the draft. He just might be able to move into second. Dave Mater in one of the three V6s in the field today, a 274 cubic inch V6 engine, and they get a little bit larger restrictor plate on that car, and it certainly shows a difference. In fact, the other V6 in the field is the car number 80. That's Jimmy Horton. The restrictor plates don't affect the V6 engines as much as it does the V8. It doesn't reduce the horsepower as much. They get a 100-pound weight break. The V8s have to weigh 3,400 pounds. The front two cars weigh 100 pounds left. Here is Bob Keselowski in the car number 29, former series champion, along with Mike Davis, a newcomer. He is driving one of the Bob Shack Motorsports Oldsmobiles. Keselowski, of course, has a lot of experience in drafting. He drives a little bit deeper into the turn, takes the low groove, and takes the position. Brand new race car for Bob Keselowski, 39-year-old driver from Michigan. Brand new Chevrolet Lumina. He has been running the Chevrolet Beretta on the speedways and not running very well. That's for 10th and 11th spot. Mike Davis, who had qualified in 7th in the car number 6. That's the Oldsmobile. As you can see, the nine cars, there's four cars in the lead draft, and then there were a pack of five cars behind them. And then it's a little ways back to that 10th and 11th place battle that we were watching. But these are the leaders now, the first four. Then you see the next five as they head down the back stretch in the turn three. Chris Gerke in the car number 19 you saw there. There is Ben Hess in the car number 40. Bobby Bauscher in the 21. That's the way they finished at Daytona with Hess taking the win. And the youngster Bauscher finishing second spot. That's the second pack of cars. Hess had had some problems with his car, Jerry. Just, uh, they couldn't find out what it was. They didn't have to the They changed everything on the car. And finally, late yesterday, they changed the engine. So he says this morning that he hopes they had it fixed. Ben, of course, always a strong runner in the car number 40 on the super speed race. Challenge for fifth spot as Ben Hess now goes underneath Chris Gerke in the car number 19, the lean supreme machine. Gerke's trying to hold him off. Brand new Oldsmobile for Ben Hess, the Daytona ARCA 200 winner. Again, they are battling fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth on your screen. Gerke, Hess, Bauscher, then comes the car number 77 of Mark Gibson. Hess has sponsorship for this event from Splinter Sportswear. One of the companies, the Hank Jones and Sports Image. 
course, Chris Gerke is the person who has that position right now. Chris Gerke has a, his best finishes in Arca, a couple of fours at Pocono. The lane supreme car of Chris Gerke. Back up front, there is Dave Mater. We mentioned he has run primarily on the short tracks. The four-time All-American Challenge Series champion. He's showing the way about three car lengths over Jimmy Horton in a Pontiac. And they just went around that car number 54 that I mentioned that was in the pits for a while, John Alexander. So he's a lap down. Early laps here at Talladega, Alabama. The ARCA Poland Pro 500 kilometer. And Dave Mater showing the way. Don't go away. Rebanking is the scene of this ARCA event today at Talladega Super Speedway. Dave Mater III holding off Bill Venturini. The third car on your screen, the car number 95, is Ken Reagan. Those cars battling one through four. Here's the battle back fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Is Chris Gerke still trying to hold off Ben Hess? And he's doing a good job on it. Gerke is the car. And the car number 21, of course. Right, Gerke is the 19. Ben Hess the 40. Bowser, you said, did the 21. 77 of Mark Gibson. His fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. the differential between the second pack and the lead pack. And we only see the three cars out in front, Dave Mater and Bill Venturini and the car number 95 of Ken Reagan. They pulled away just a few car lengths from the car number 80 of Jimmy Horton. Now, two laps ago, Jerry, or about a lap and a half ago, he was running in second place, Jimmy Horton, and the, he got out of the draft a little bit, and they just motored right on by. He's trying to catch back up. Now the battle again heats up for fifth spot on the bottom of the racetrack, Ben Hess. Winner of the very first ARCA event for 1991. He is set on the pole here before, but is yet to win at Talladega. He's hoping that Bobby Bowser will come with him when he makes that move down on the inside because two cars can run faster than one car, and if they hook up together, they might be able to grab past, but so far that hasn't happened. Chris Gerke in fifth. I mentioned his best finish in the ARCA was a fourth at Pocono. You will see our racing later on this year on ESPN. These same ARCA cars twice. Joe and Rose Mattioli's fine facility up in the Pocono Mountains. But today they're on the high banks, a 33-degree banking of Talladega Super Speedway. Speed just a tick over 190 miles per hour. That's the battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh. Pack up front. Here's the four car pack for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And then look back, there's another four car pack for ninth, tenth, eleventh, and the twelfth. That's led by Kozlowski in car number 29. Bob Keselowski to 34 is the race play viewing of Bob Reback, the defending Arca Series champion. back into car number 34. He's in 10th spot. Keselowski in ninth. There's the car number 6 of Mike Davis. The Oldsmobile. That's 9th, 10th, and 11th. Deal getting spread out here. One car that slowed considerably is Carl Miscotton Jr. Yes, he was in that pack. There were four in the pack, but now he has slowed dramatically and down on the inside. Let's check into the pits to see if Benny Parks can update us on the Miscotton car. Benny? Jerry, as Carl and Scott went by just a moment ago, the car, the engine had a very dead sound, like it lost a cylinder. I don't know if he's got a V6 or V8, but evidently he's missing a couple of them, and I would expect he'd be in the pits pretty soon. He's heading that way right now, Benny. Tough break. Now, Carl Miscott Jr. and his son, Carl Miscott III, split driving duties on that car, and we're going to have a long afternoon here. Back up front, Dave Mater. Mater has run an ARCA competition in the past. In fact, his first ARCA start back in 1983. Primarily concentrated on the short track. Last year, he ran a Bush Grand National car, and you saw that car run many times on ESPN. But he's showing the way here in Talladega. Now we're waiting for the second group. There they finally come into the picture. The front group is pulling away a little bit, and Ben Hess finally has moved into the fifth position in the car number 40. There's the lead draft. Mater, Venturini, Reagan, and Hart, those four cars. Going by Alan Pruitt there in turns one and two. Last lap speed, we said 193.45 miles per hour. That's faster than 
Bill Venturini ran to win the pole. He was ran 192.7 to win the pole. Good battle back in the pack. This would be for seventh and eighth. Donnie Moran in the car number 99, and Bobby Bauscher, a couple of young drivers. Moran is 28 years of age from Fredericksburg, Ohio. That's the Chrysler. Chrysler LeBaron up on the high side, and they are right behind Ben Hess. Ben Hess has been repassed by Chris Gerke. So Gerke is fifth, Hess is sixth, and this is the battle for seventh spot. Moran has had some good runs in that Chrysler car so far this year, Jerry. He has qualified this car awfully well. He qualified fifth in that car a year ago. The problem they had with the Chrysler engine, Ed, was they couldn't get the car to run all afternoon. The car was extremely fast, but they wanted to build some durability for 1991. He started fifth here last year. We said did not finish. Ended up getting a 30th place on the field. But can't quite get around Bobby Bowser there coming off turn two. Bowser made a good move uh, as they left a car, and he picked up the rep and uh, shot him right on by. Let's see. Car number 46 of uh, Ron Cox. They moved around. Back up front, Dave Bader the third. In car number 11. We might mention that that car number 11 was penalized prior to the start of the race. We mentioned it has a V6 engine in it. But what the ARCA official did, President Bob Wolkin said that the, the body on the car, you see how the nose dips down on the front, a great camera shot, guys. The nose sort of comes down on the front. It slopes a little more than some of the other cars. It doesn't quite fit the template. So rather than giving him a full inch and a 16th restrictor plate, they dropped him back to a one-inch plate. But it doesn't seem to be affecting him right now. It doesn't seem to affect him a great deal. As I said earlier, the restrictor plate doesn't affect the horsepower of the V6s as much, or certainly percentage-wise, as it does the V8s. The car sponsored by Sealtech. The Sealtech Motorsports car it is. That's the Clint Folsom Old Company out of Festival, Alabama. The Clint owns that company. And not far down the road here, but Dave Mader having it all his way here in the early laps at Talladega Super Speedway. Bill Venturini in pursuit. Ken Reagan, Jimmy Horton, and Chris Gerke in the top five. Lots of lap left. Stay with us. Burner here on the high banks of Talladega, then. A couple of drivers, the veteran Bill Venturini, former ARCA Series national champion, holding on and really giving Bader all he can handle. Yes, he is, and he might be content. Uh, they're pulling away from the, the third and fourth place cars a little bit, so Bill might be content to sit there and ride a little bit. Here's a battle. J.D. McDuffie, who started in 39th spot in the car number 70, now being shown in 13th position. Good run for J.D. It's a great run. He qualifying for the Winston 500, so he came in and came to the Archer race and started in the rear, and we have a note that Ben Hess has fallen off the pace in the car number 40. Right, the car number 5 you see in your screen, that's Clay Young, the Smyrna, Georgia driver in that battle. The Kent Reynolds Pontiac. The 85 there is Bobby Gerhardt. Good run for Gerhardt, currently fourth in the Arca point standings. He may run for the Arca Series Championship if he can hang on in the top five points for the first three or four events of the year. That's McDuffie in the blue car, the car number 70. Long time Western Cup competitor. Car number 33 leading that draft. That's Dale McDowell, the Chickamauga, Georgia driver. I'm glad you said that. I thought I was in a Mexican restaurant there for a moment, maybe for orders. Well, that's, that's Jimmy Chonka. Okay. Here's Ben Hess, who certainly has had, as you said, Ned, troubles all weekend. Ignition problems, motor problems. They finally borrowed an engine, and it looks like he will have more problems before the day is over. The car rolling slowly into the pits. Tough break for the car number 40, Ben Hess. Back up front. Mater now content to ride up a couple of car lengths there in front of Bill Venturini. Richard Venturini hanging on. Venturini has uh, Nest teeth, and Raynex has sponsor on his Chevrolet. They seem, now that they're lapping traffic, let's see if he makes a move, but he seems to be content just sitting there riding behind the player. Going up around the outside of Glenn Brewer, last year's Rookie of the Year in the car number 10 of the Budweiser car. And that did let the car number 95 and Ken Reagan catch up. That's the red car. Third in line. He did a back a little bit, but once they got in that traffic, he picked up, picked up the draft. And he was running up their well, the Buick of Mater, then comes a pair of Chevrolet. Now, Ken Reagan in the car number 95, very confident before today that he would have a shot to win this thing. Why would he be 
he's so confident back there running in third spot. Well, when he qualified, there's the leader, Dave Mater. Coming into your screen, there's Victory, and there in the third place car, right on their bumper, is Ken Reagan. The engine he used to qualify came from the Ernie Irvin team, the Morgan LaFleur Racing team. And of course, Ernie Irvin on the pole for the Winston 500. You will see later today. They know how to generate a lot of horsepower with restrictor plate on the high banks of Talladega. One of their engines is there. They moved away from Jimmy Horton in car number 80, the front three cars have. Horton still is in fourth place. Jack Bowser, Bobby Bowser, Jack Bowser's son, has moved up into the top five now in fifth place. Boy, Jack was a great one, wasn't he? He's, uh, he's 60 years old, looks like he's 40. He was a great racer. I had the privilege of racing against him a number of times, although he ran uh, USAC most of the time, and I, I raced, of course, NASCAR. Draft back in the back, Bill McDowell back there, of course, with J.D. McDuffie, Clay Young, and this whole group now. The leaders closing in in a hurry on them. And there is Dave Mater just behind the Clay Young car. That right. black and bright green Pontiac, and Mater will take it to the inside here in the trial. Like Kyle Petty's car, Clay Young's driving. The colors, at least, are similar to Kyle Petty's car, but has the first number five on it. Mater being very careful, realizing there are probably some uh, considerably less experienced drivers back in that pack than what you might have up front. And, and this is where they do have to be careful, Jerry. We mentioned at the top of the show that there's 30 miles an hour difference in the qualifying speed of some of these drivers, and now we're seeing them catch them, so they need to be very careful as they move through. Now, McDuffie's a 12-place car. That's a car number 70. You saw Mater just say, see you, on the inside and flash by. Now, he's on the bottom of the track. There is Dale McDowell. The Georgia driver made her really having that car come up to full speed out of turn four, performing very, very well. But one driver who hoped to be running up front all day is now standing by with our Benny Parsons. Benny? Ben, has, you've had a couple of engine problems throughout the week. Is that what put you out today? Well, we had engine problems all week long, and we worked hard in the crew, got the car out on the track. We was running real good and lost the left front wheel bearing. A wheel bearing? Yeah, left front wheel bearing must have went out on us, and uh, that, that put us out for the day, but that's all right. We'll come back to the next one and be better. The Daytona winner out for the day, Jerry. Tough break for the Hank Jones on Splinter Sportswear car. They look to have a good run today, but they will be back, and you will see them many times on our ARCA coverage on Speedwell this year. After having all those engine problems this week, Jerry, a wheel bearing would probably have been the last thing they would have thought would have given them a problem, especially on a super speedway. You saw Dave Mater a minute ago plowing through that field now. He has put all the 10 cars a lap down. There are just 10 cars on the lead lap. Last time by, the average speed for that lap was 92.016 miles per hour. Okay, they're motoring right on now. Reagan has been caught back in that pack, pack of traffic. He didn't get through as good as Mater and Venturini. So once he gets out of this traffic, he's still running in third place, but he has lost the draft to Felipe. And we'll pan back to the car number 21 of Bobby Bowser, who is running in the fifth position. There's Jimmy Horton. Now he's starting to close in. There is Bowser. Bobby Bowser, the car number 21, finished second in Daytona. Chris Gerke, impressive young driver. Don Moran, one of the best dirt track drivers in America. They're among the 10 cars on the lead lap. They are fifth, sixth, and seventh, respectively. Bobby Bowser uses the Ford Thunderbird, the same car. In fact, the same engine he used. He had some pretty good runs here. Had a great run going last year. Remember the late stage this event? He spun the car off a of turn two and tagged the wall. A tough break for the young driver. Now, he won twice in ARCA competition a year ago, but both times they were on the short track. So he's yet to get his first Speedway win, but everyone in the garage thinks this young man is going to be a great one. He's certainly shown a lot of potential. Here are the leaders again, Dave Mater. Of course, car number 11 out front, and Bill Venturini just seems to be content riding on his bike. Well, the veteran Bill Venturini can hold on for a little while as Mater leads him away. Blue skies finally at Talladega Super Speedway. Lots of racing to come your way. Stay with us.
Super Speedway, exciting automobile racing club of America. Super Speedway action coming your way. Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, and yours truly, Jerry Punch, here for 500 kilometers this afternoon. 500 kilometers on a 2.66 mile track. That's 311 miles or 117 laps. And we are in lap 26. Battle up front continues. Dave Mater at V6 in the Clint Folsom Old Buick showing the way. And the speed continues to climb at 192.030 miles an hour. And the poles only 192.7, so they are really turning the wick up. Yes, they are. And almost as fast as the average is almost as fast as Bill Venturini won the goal with. Now, the fifth place car of Bobby Bowser is a little over 18 seconds behind these two front cars. So that's another indication of how fast these fellows are running. There we move back, and you see the car number 95. That's Ken Reagan. He's the third place car. Right behind him, Jimmy Horton. Reagan in the Chevrolet. Horton in the Pontiac Grand Prix. That's third and fourth. They're running about 49.7, 49.8 seconds around this track, which is, is pretty good. In fact, it's excellent in the race. With Jimmy Horton earlier, you know, he won those five events on the speedway last year, including here at Talladega, in that Pontiac, and he switched into a Chevrolet Lumina. I wonder why would a driver win five in a row in the speedways and switch car makes? Well, he, he switched to Chevrolet, didn't finish here in July, ran out of gas at Daytona with two laps to go in the season opener, ended up finishing fourth down there. He said, hey, I'm going to take the Pontiac back out of the barn and bring it back to Talladega. And it's running pretty well for him. Yes, it is. It's, it's running very good. He is currently in fourth place. You wonder why a fellow would uh, go away from a car that had been so successful for him. Back up front, Dave Vader. We mentioned he is subbing in the Cliff Folsom on car for Clifford Allison. Clifford Allison drives for Clint Folsom in the Bush Grand National Series. Had a great run up at Bristol, Tennessee early this year. Finished sixth. Saw that coverage on ESPN. Here's the battle. Third and fourth. A couple of car links separating. Ken Reagan and Jimmy Horton. That V6 holding off the V8 for Bill Venturini up front. Let's check into the pits with Benny Parsons. Okay, some concern down your Dave Mater pit because the car is running hot. They walked up to me and said, how hot do you think the car will stand at us? Well, they should be able to take 240. He said, that's exactly how much it's running, 240 degrees. They're hoping for a caution flag because they think they can open the grill up a little bit and give it some more air and cool it down. But we haven't seen a caution flag yet. And if one doesn't come out, when they make their green flag pit stop, the grass spent a lot of time opening the grill up, and it lead could go away. Now, many of the fans listening in knows that the boiling point is 212 degrees. Boiling point of water, that is. How can it run 240 degrees? Good point, Ned, because the radiator cap that these fellows use on the race car are 21-pound caps, and you can raise the boiling point of water three degrees for every pound of pressure you put it under. So they should be able to stay at 250, 260 degrees, and the water still stay in the radiator. We'll keep an eye on Dave Bader, possibly the, the problem brewing there for that car number 11. Speaking of brewing, that ST car behind him, Bill Venturini, the new sponsorship. Now, he was going to run some Winston Cup events there with a the big car that has Rain X and Nesty on the rear deck, but decided he made this run for the Arca title in 1991. Here's 8th, 9th, and 10th coming at us, and that is Bob Keselowski in the car number 29, Bob Freeback in car number 34, and the car number 6 of Bill Davis, or Mike Davis, I should say Mike Davis, a 40-year-old driver, his first ever trip to Talladega. And Jerry, they aren't too far in front of the leaders. There we see Bob Freeback, Keselowski on your left, and Freeback on the right of the screen, and they're looking in their rearview mirror, and they see the front two cars coming at them. The no. later in Venturini just a little bit back behind him up toward turn two. There's Keselowski, the 1989 Arca Series National Champion, currently being shown in eighth spot. Brand new Chevrolet Lumen. There's the Buick, the defending series champion, Bob Freeback. Beautiful car, the race glaze Buick. And now you see just coming into the picture is Dave Mater. 
in the car number 11. Six, it was in 10th spot as they moved by the ninth and the eighth place cars. Now just seven cars in the lead lap. And I'll tell you, Keselowski and Breback are running good. And yet they just breeze right on by. They're running speeds in excess of 188 miles an hour, and they just, like they were sitting still as Mater just sort of slipped by and waved. Now, let's see if they can, either of them can hook up and grab those two. That's what, if you get lapped on a super speedway, that's what you hope that you can do. Certainly, your pit crew hopes that you can pick up on those two front cars and pull away from that group that you were racing with. But I don't believe any of those drivers are going to be able to pick up these two. They're just simply running too fast. 32 laps complete here. There's Dave Mater. Now, they'll have a pit stop coming up before too long, Jerry. Well, 40 laps here is 106 miles on the 2.66-mile facility. Remember, the V6 engine here with the restrictor plate is going to get pretty good gas mileage, and that was one of the things that Jimmy Horton was counting on. It may be his whole car. Yeah, I'm sure they can go well over 100 miles. Uh, I think they'll have to make two pit stops, a minimum of two pit stops for fuel during the 312 mile race. They might not stretch it too far the first time and then then calculate that mileage, although most of them have calculated the mileage in practice, but it still don't come out the same until you get out of competition like you are now. Well, we'll see if Dave Bader could hold off Bill Venturini and what's going to happen with the pit strategy when we come back to Talladega Super Speedway for more exciting ARCA racing after this. He certainly is going to improve on that today if he can hold on and stay up front. Well, I understand that he is thinking about pitting at around 40 laps, Jerry, about four laps from now. That would be 106 miles. You know, some of the drivers in the V6 engine said they might be able to make it between 50 and 55. In fact, there was some talk in the garage area, possibly Jimmy Horton going as long as 60 laps. That's 160 miles. That's going to be tough. Well, it, it will be tough. Now, one thing that it'll do for him, it won't let him, he still is going to have to make at least two pit stops during the race, but he might be able to catch a caution in between when the others pit and when he pits, and that could be an advantage for him. Both those drivers up front on the Goodyear Eagle radials. Radial tires being run here at Talladega. In fact, the first time they were raced here was last July in the ARCA division. They are now being used this year in both ARCA and Winston Cup. The same tire. Of course, in the ARCA series, there's also the Hoosier tire, and that's what the car number 80 is wearing. They have the Hoosier tires on the Jimmy Horton car. And there they are. There indeed is Jimmy Horton, just following Ken Reagan. That's the third and fourth place car. Chevrolet for Reagan. That's the Earl and Chuck Sadler on car, and behind them is Jimmy Horton. They have brought back pretty far behind the, the leaders as Mater and Vittorini continue to go away. Blistering pace being set up front by that man there, Dave Mater, in the car number 11. The Seal Tech Industry, Clint Folsom sponsored Buick. That's a 1991 Buick Regal behind him. Chevrolet Monte Carlo. That's Bill Venturini. They're about seven seconds ahead of the third and fourth place cars that we just saw a moment ago, Jerry. For many of you fans who watch our Winston Cup coverage, you may be wondering what the difference between a Winston Cup car is and these ARCA cars. They look very much the same, and there really isn't a whole lot of difference except that the ARCA cars weigh about 100 pounds less if it's a V8. In fact, it weighs 200 pounds less if it's a V6, and that number 11 indeed is a V6. The wheelbase is exactly the same, 110 inches. They're allowed to run a roller cam in the ARCA division to make it a little bit easier for horsepower. Hey, here are the last three cars on the lead lap, Jerry. The fifth place car of Bobby Bowser. And the car number 29 of Bob Cuff. Let's see, no, that's not 29, the black car. Bobby Bowser, the car number yeah. 21 is there. And behind them is Chris Gerke. Fifth, sixth, and seventh, Bowser, Gerke, and Donnie by the lap car of Billy Thomas. That's the bright, big, low, orange. 
Now, Bob Breback just made a pit stop, and we understand that he might have coasted in and was out of gas. The other car is coming into the pits now, so pit stops are coming up. Got to wonder, slowing Dave. down is the car number 11 of Dave Mater. Yeah, and, and it, I believe he is out of gas, and he, it happened at the worst spot on the racetrack that it could have, Jerry. He was already past the pit entrance when it ran out. He's going to have to coast all the way around the racetrack. Remember, we said a moment ago that he was going to pit on lap 40. He has just completed lap 40. He should have come in one lap earlier. It's going to really cost him. 2.66 miles from any kind of help at all is Dave Mater in that Jasper engine seal tech Buick. What a helpless feeling. Remember, Benny Parsons reported a little bit ago they might have had an overheating problem as Bobby Gerhardt's car exits on pit road. One of the early leaders. And there is Mater, who seemed to have everything going his way. Now let's see again what happened coming out of turn four. There he is leading, and he begins to slow. Yeah, he pulls down so Bill Venturini can go by on the outside. But the pit entrance is right to his left. He was going too fast to make an entrance on to, to pit road. And now the leader... Bill Venturini is on pit road, but his car was running when he came in. He's going to change right side tires and get a tank of fuel. Bill Venturini, crew chief Phil Hamner, car owner Kathy Venturini, they're working on the car. Meanwhile, still not getting back to pit road. We are waiting on the car number 11 of Dave Mater. And here comes that 11 coasting into the pits, and they're changing all four tires on the Venturini car. That's Kathy Venturini just behind the wall. Bill's wife, you see she's directing the pit crew. Phil Hamner, the crew chief there, making sure they get the car completely full of fuel, drops it off the jack, and he is down and away. And let's check in in the Dave Mater pit where Benny Parsons is standing. Benny. Jerry Punch, was that unbelievable? And they're having trouble getting fuel in the car. They're having all kinds of problems. Now the gasoline, but the car doesn't want to take the gasoline right. It's like the vent in the back is not working or something. Look at all the gasoline that they're spilling. They finally got that can in. Now the car is fired, and they're still trying to, they're changing the right size while they're here, but they're trying to get some gasoline in the car. They're having a real struggle. We'll have to find out from these fellows just how much gasoline they was able to put in the car, Jerry. Yeah, I don't believe they got it full, baby, because I don't think they got uh, those two cans in there, and he was out, so those fuel cells hold 22 gallons, so that's really going right to hurt him. Here's the car that's leading. Remember, I told you, Jimmy Horton said that fuel mileage might just be his strong suit today. He was not running that quickly early on, but maybe he was conserving fuel a little bit. Five-time winner last year set an unprecedented record, but now he will come in for service. He brings the car number 80. Jimmy Horton in the, in the Pontiac Grand Prix. Coming in as he was completing 43 laps. That car owned by George Smith, his father-in-law, and now Rich Miller, the crew chief, and the rest of that crew go to work. They will change right side tires. And let's check into that pit stop of Benny Parsons. Well, Jerry, they are changing the right side, still in the car for fuel. They also have made a chassis adjustment on the Horton automobile. I saw them on the left rear, put a little bit of wedge in the car. Meanwhile, there's a car sitting right in the middle of pit road in front of them. The 21 car, who is their leader now, is coming into pit. And they're pushing that car off pit road fine. Here comes Bowser down pit road, Jerry. While I'm here, I'll just go ahead and call it. Bobby brings the car in slowly. Comes to a stop. This car has the Hoosier tires on it. They go around, take a look at the right side, decided not to change it, but it's only gasoline. Those are three, two brothers putting in the gasoline and the father, Jack Bowser, back to the catch can man. Two more sons up at the left front of the car, so there's five Bowsers. There's the car takes off, Jerry. Well, great work by the Bowser Brigade down there to get young uh, Bobby out, the 24-year-old driver who finished fifth here a couple of years ago and had a great run at Daytona, so he was the leader. He has now made his first pit stop for fuel. If you have that many family members on payroll, it probably payroll isn't quite as high. Probably just an extra uh, biscuit or two on the table, yeah, and that's all you got to do. First round of pit stops being complete for the leaders here at lap 43. 117 laps will make up this 500-kilometer Arca Pullen Pro 500K. Lots of racing left. Don't go away. The Talladega Super Speedway just coming off the first caution flag of the day for a couple of cars having stalled on the track. Brought out the yellow flag. Some pit stops made on the track. And Jimmy Horton, the car number 80, showing the way. But they are shuffling up right behind him. Ken Reagan in the car number 95. The Chevrolet on the inside as he battles another Chevrolet Lumina for Bill Venturini. And now it looks like Reagan will have the advantage by a car length. But Venturini's charging back. 
the two cars that were stalled on the track that caused the caution was car double zero, Keith Edge, and the car number 43, Bill Flowers. They no harm done other than they just stalled and couldn't get the cars going, so they were pulled into the pushed into the pit area. In fact, they're back out running. Great run for the car number 19 of Chris Gerke. Young driver in the black car, running fourth. There's Horton Venturini. Jimmy Horton, five ARCA wins in 1990, an all-time ARCA series record, five consecutive super speedway victories. Here, I'm not sure that Jimmy Horton wanted to see that caution. He had made a green flag pit stop and took on fuel. Oh, and here's trouble. One car sliding sideways down across the tribal area, car number 68. And that is the effort of Walter Serma from Charlotte, North Carolina, the Mark Chapman Smith Oldsmobile. And he has come into contact with something, has some heavy sheet metal damage on the front of that Oldsmobile, and the car is slipping through, sliding through a very, very damp and grassy area of the infield. There's still some standing water down here, probably saving from getting the car across the track in front of other traffic. Yeah, that's, that infield area is very, very wet as a result of the rain here last night and a good portion of today. And here's the Bud car, the number 10 of Glenn Brewer, with a lot of damage to his car. Glenn Brewer, last year's Arthur Rookie of the Year. He's trying to make his way back to pit road. Well, he has a lot of damage on the front of that automobile. 37-year-old driver. That's the Eagle Budweiser sponsorship out of Opelika, Alabama. And let's see again here the car spinning. Here's Serma's car spinning around and around, headed for that inside concrete barrier. Hits it pretty hard, then continues on its way, goes across the entrance of Pit Road. Now, that was off turn four that we saw him, and now he slides back across the grass. And I think you're right, Jerry. I think the mud that he was digging into helped to keep him from sliding back up on the racetrack. We can see some movement inside the car, and we will check on the condition of the driver of the car, number 68, Walter Serma, who brings out the second caution flag of the day. Here, 54 laps complete. Lots more to come your way. Don't go away. Something happened today on the parade lap or the warm-up lap that happens very often in a race car. A car just quit. That was the car of John Alexander from Elmira, New York. He coasted in the pits. Someone died in the car. They fooled around a little bit, and the car started up and drove off. What they do when they dive in these cars, they switch ignition amplifiers. There's two of these in the car. There's a plug-in. All they do is unplug one, plug this one in, they fire the car up. We see that quite often in the Winston Cup race. Indeed, they have those things mounted in the car, and they will have a lot of work to be done on this car. And good news, Walter Serma, 31 years of age. Yes, wife Teresa, who's watching back home, and he will be okay, and he will race again. But he has had many close calls in his life. He escaped from communist Poland back in 1976 at the age of 17. But where did he come from today? Well, take a look. Across the grass, through the mud. You can see the holes that the car was digging as it came across there, which I think kept him from going back up on the traffic and then across the pit road. And here's where he came from out off of turn four and apparently made contact with the car number 10 of Glenn Brewer as he came across the track. Good crowd on hand today for great ARCA racing action. Top 20, Jimmy Horton, Bill Venturini, Reagan Gerke, and Donnie Moran. One through five, six through 10. Bowser Keselowski. Venturini car is about the third, fourth. Reagan and Gerke. Reagan the red car, Gerke the black with the red numerals, number 19 on the side. Look how quickly they're able to, to move up on Horton. He, as I said, he got a good start, but they picked up the draft and have moved right back on his bumper. Jimmy Horton still leading. Venturini just pulls right on his, his back bumper, but he doesn't make any moves to try to get around. He seems content running in second place. Of course, the third place car there is Ken Reagan. Chris Gerke dropping off, not dropping off, but has dropped back a couple of three car lengths from the front three. He isn't careful to lose the draft, but I think he's picking back up now as he heads into turn three. And then the reason these drivers are looking like they're battling for the finish is because they indeed are. We mentioned we had about a four hour and a half delay this morning. The sun is setting here in eastern Alabama, and the ARCA officials have told us that because of the daylight, they are going to give these drivers in about 10 minutes the 15 laps to go signal. So they will cut this race short by virtue of 
the long delay in rain today. They want to make sure they have plenty of daylight to race at 200 miles an hour. So they are indeed racing this sprint event for these final few laps for the win. Out of race, you see those drivers who have had some bad luck, including Walter Serma, the, the seventh car to park it, bringing out the second caution. Glenn Brewer behind the wall. Car number 20 is Wade and Dave Mater. We understand they had a left rear wheel, wheel bearing right on the Mater car. They had an overheating problem early on, and that's the same problem that put Ben Hess out of it here. Mater was one of the earlier leaders of the race, and he made numerous pit stops during the caution period and finally had to put it behind the wall. Remember Jimmy Horton? He was the driver that they had the sub for Darrell Walter last year when Walter was in that July 4th crash at Daytona. Did a respectable job driving the tied Chevrolet. Had a good one here at Talladega in July. Yes, he did. Leading the three cars that are beginning to pull away from Chris Gerke a little bit now. Bill Venturini is still hanging on tight in second place. Ken Reagan, who has a good bit of experience here on this speedway. In Western Cup competition, several Arkham races. And just banged the wall pretty hard a couple of times and uh, had a broken shoulder. Had a broken neck, had some vertebrae problems in his neck, and Bill Venturini there, Jimmy Horton, Venturini in second place. And Venturini has not had a great beginning in 1991. There's Ken Reagan. Speaking of injuries, Reagan had that horrible crash here at Talladega in 1985. He broke the second cervical vertebrae. Believe me, there are seven of those, and you don't want to break them above four or five, and he broke the second one up close to the base of the skull, and he was in a halo apparatus for five and a half weeks. The remarkable thing is not only did he recover, but 11 weeks from the time he broke his neck, he raced at Michigan. Wow. These guys are tough, aren't they? Now, we see the front three cars, Jerry, but look how far it is back to Chris Girk in just a few laps. I said a little while ago that it looked like he was going to lose the draft, and he has now. Running back there by himself. Those front three cars. He just his his away. There's not a thing in the world he can do about it because he's sitting there running wide open. Chris Kirk is. And not a thing that he can do about it. In fact, uh, they, they, another pack of cars is beginning to come up on him as they draft together. And that car number 99 running in the fifth position is Donnie Moran. Good run for Donnie Moran. Remember, he has qualified very, very well with that. Chrysler LeBaron. Joey Harrison preparing the engine for that driver. That's the white red Newmark card of 99. He's the fifth place car. A little action behind him there as those cars uh, jockey around a little bit. Now, car number 54 is at least one lap down. He lost a lap earlier to John Alexander that Benny Parsons talked about having that ignition problem. Bobby Bowser down on the inside, car number 21. He would like to get up there with Donnie Moran, try to pull away from this group of cars. And there's Bob Keselowski. He should be the seventh place car. The black car, number 29. Back up front, here's the trio they're chasing. Jimmy Horton, Bill Venturini, and Ken Reagan. And trouble here on the front straightaway as Keselowski's car. No, that's Chris Kirk's Kirk. car has gotten upside down and come into contact. Heavy contact here in the front straightaway. A couple of cars. Chris Gerke's car getting upside down and sideways, coming to rest on its top, spinning, and now he has been impacted again by another car here right in the main triable area. Heavy contact. Serious contact. Tremendous ride by Chris Gerke. Outstanding effort by the young driver. In the car number 19, the lean Supreme car. Jerry, they're racing back to the start finish. This might be the end of this race because you mentioned it was darkness was closing in pretty quickly, and this is a very serious accident. As the leaders come back, there, the race cars are off the racetrack, but there's a lot of debris and everything there from a tremendous wreck here on the front straightaway. Heavy impact. There is the remains of the car number 19 of Chris Gerke. Outstanding effort by this young driver. Qualified the car in sixth spot. 25-year-old Lincoln, Alabama driver. Let's look again and see if we can see what happened. Now, he had been running in the top five. You see the car get sideways and now get airborne. Yes, it did. And the back end just picks up off the ground. The spoiler, when he got backwards, the spoiler, the air under just lifted him up. He hits the wall 
just under the flagman stand and continues to roll over. And here comes other cars coming Rebeck in on him. Just misses him. Keselowski gets by, and one car has nowhere to go. And burst into flames as the front of that car now is sheared away. Heavy impact there. We will check out the condition. There's the Davis car number six, the Mike Davis machine, the car number 70, J.D. McDuffie there. Caution for the third time today here in Talladega, Alabama. We'll be back with more on what's going on after this. Talladega Super Speedway, the site of today's 500-kilometer ARCA event. Still under caution for the third time today. This race will end under caution as Doyle Ford there on the flag stand and still has the yellow flag in his right hand. He will wave the white flag to Jimmy Horton. Jimmy Horton driving a Pontiac car number 80. 34-year-old Hamilton, New Jersey driver will take the Miles Concrete Pontiac to victory lane. Spectacular crash just moments ago here to bring out the third caution flag of the day as the field now comes by and indeed the white and yellow flag being waved to the field as they pass in review. There is Horton. They move by the crash site. The helicopter standing by from the Caraway Medical Center. Let's take a look once again. Lap 67. This horrible incident now coming through the trioval area. Chris Gerke in the car number 19 running fourth. And his car apparently getting a little bit out of shape. You see at the top of the screen, the car begins to get airborne, Dan. Yes, and when it turned backwards, the spoiler there, um, the spoiler just lifted it up and it started rolling. Hits the outside retainer wall. Watch for Bob Bree back to the right of your screen. He just misses the car. Then the black car of Dale McDowell just coming into your screen now. He is blocking Carl Miss Scotton's view. Those cars in the middle of your screen. McDowell goes to the right, and Miss Scotton has nowhere to go. Didn't even see Gerke sitting stop in the middle of the track. It impacts it. And then Miss Cotton's car erupts in flames. The front half of his car is completely sheared away. You see J.D. McDuffie sliding down toward the car number six of Mike Davis. Other cars involved. Bobby Massey's car number 67 contacted the inside wall. We mentioned J.D. McDuffie involved. And now the Caraway Medical Center helicopter, the Lifesaver helicopter from the north side of Birmingham, there to take some of the drivers in for further checkups. Two drivers having walked away. This is the final lap. Of course, they were Bobby Massey and Mike Davis were, were okay. They've got reports. J.D. McDuffie's car did sustain some damage. He was able to pull away. Bobby Massey has been to the infield care center to be checked out, and Mike Davis, Bob Brevac avoiding it, Dale McDowell avoiding it. The two drivers most seriously involved, Carl Miscotton, Jr., 42 years of age, driving to car number three. That's the car that erupted into flames. And initially, what a tremendous run by the 25-year-old driver, Chris Gerke driving the car number 19. He's from Lincoln, Alabama, the lean Supreme Oldsmobile. He was running fourth that on lap 67 when the car apparently just got out of shape and the car began to slide and then the horrible scene there headed into turn one. Now the chopper begins to take off with Chris Gerke aboard headed for the Caraway Medical Center. Checkered flag this time for Jimmy Horton and not the way a driver would like to win a race under caution. They had a tremendous race going up front between Horton, Bill Venturini back behind him in the Chevrolet. will finish in second spot. Ken Reagan, the car number 95, the Sadler on machine will finish third. Unofficially at fourth, Donnie Moran, the Chrysler. LeBaron, best finish ever on the speedway for Donnie Moran in the car number 99. He will finish in the fourth spot. And coming home in fifth will be Bobby Bowser in the Ford number 21. Remember, there was about a four-hour and a half rain delay earlier today, and that's why it is so late in the afternoon. And now the yellow and checkered flag to Jimmy Horton, and the 34-year-old driver will go to victory lane, having won the Poland Pro 500-kilometer event shortened here today, abbreviated for two reasons. One, because of the inclement weather earlier today, as Bill Venturini will ride by and signal and wave to Jimmy Horton who will take that Pontiac to victory lane. Five times he did it a year ago. He's picking up his first win of 1991. And we'll be here in Alabama as the arc of Poland Pro 500K is history, and Jimmy Horton has gone to victory lane. Jerry, it's kind of a subdued victory lane down here. Jimmy Horton, you're, you find victory lane again in 1991. Yeah, we rolled in. You know, it's not the way we want to roll in here. You know, we like last year we rolled in. You know, it was a good race to the end. 
uh, you had an unfortunate accident there, you know, and just brought the caution out, you know, with the rain and everything. It's just been getting late, and, you know, we won the race till the end, you know. It would have been a real good race to you know, Kenny Reagan and Bill Venturini. I don't know if I had enough for him. You know, I had enough to stay in front of him, but I don't know if I had enough to pass him back once they got me. Daytona with two laps to go when they threw the green flag, you run out of fuel. Have you gotten over that mistake yet? Well, you never get over, you know, a mistake on your part. You know that, Benny, but... Uh, you know, you got to go on to the next race, and that's what we're trying to do. And, you know, we flubbed up a little bit at Atlanta. But, um, you know, we're back. You know, the team needed this. You know, we needed an uplift. So hopefully we'll get going again. Jimmy Horton back in victory lane in the ARCA races, Jerry. Thank you, Benny. A very solemn and subdued victory lane because of this horrible incident on lap 67. Five cars involved triggered by the spinning car of Chris Gerke, 25-year-old driver. Here in the black car, the car gets out of shape and gets airborne and then begins to roll. A number of cars avoid Gerke's car, but Carl Miscotten will come into the frame here and be unable to see the car and have heavy impact. The information we have on the five drivers, two have walked away, Mike Davis and Bobby Massey. Here's the heavy impact, the two heavily involved, the car erupting in the flames right now. Carl Miscotten Jr., 42 years of age, has been transferred from the infield medical center to Caraway Medical Center just on the north side of Birmingham, Alabama. Chris Gerke, the car that was impacted there and originally spawned and flipped, the 25-year-old driver was flown by helicopter from the scene to the same Caraway Medical Center. That's all the information we have at this point in time. We would advise you to stand by for our Sports Center coverage with Ann Montgomery and Chris Fowler for further updates. On the